we all accept that uh, solid organ uh, transplantation is uh, definite disease uh, treatment since we replace a diseased organ by a healthy one. And uh, traditionally, we know that kidney, liver, heart, and lungs were the organs that were transplanted. But in the recent years, new uh, organs, genital organs, hands, and full face are also transplanted. Uh, I'm very proud to present Andrea Zaikis, my classmate at the university, who in uh, the last 40 years in the United States is a pioneer in transplantation and mainly in the total abdominal organ transplantation. And we, we all know about the origin and of uh, the procurement of organs, kidney, kidney, liver, liver. I'm going fast because I think we don't have time. But I, I want to stay on this slide since it's a very young donor. And um, um, uh, I'm sorry, this is a very young receiver since we still, uh, of course, not in Greece, but abroad, transplant babies uh, for, uh, of course, all organs, uh, lungs also. And also to focus on this uh, slide, since in the UK it, it took uh, big publicity, the youngest organ donor, a newborn with uh, an encephaly, and of course uh, it created a lot of publicity. And these are the children who received organs from this baby. And according to the results, the results are very good internationally. So things look very nice. But unfortunately, they are not so good since we don't have enough organs. It has already been mentioned, but this is the major problem internationally. And if we use data from the World Health Organization, less than 10% of the global needs are satisfied by uh, transplantation. And this gives to some humoristic aspect. These two people probably need transplantation. They, they went to the transplant center and they saw this announcement, bring your own organs. And they asked themselves, I had no idea things were quite so desperate. And if we go a little bit more uh, precisely with numbers by having, uh, using as indicator the number of donors per million popula population in order to compare country uh, with, uh, with country. And these are data from Europe and the United States included. And if you see, even though these data are coming from 2007, but more or less are the same uh, for many years. Spain is a leader. Um, in the recent years, Croatia is almost equal to Spain. Many countries like Italy, France, UK, uh, Switzerland are really very high. Unfortunately, we are the last. But I have to say, as Professor uh, Alivizato mentioned, and I really thank you very much for your comments, with a very hard and personal work uh, during my presidency, we have been able to increase the number of donors, and, uh, but not to satisfy all needs. So there is always a big list. And it's a moment to say that Italy was always a still be um, a country that uh, helped Greece very much. Initially, it was for, an, for acute liver failure as an emergency um, uh, transplantation, but during my presidency, we have extended the, uh, this cooperation for almost all organs, and including also for children. It was the opportunity for me to visit Babino Gesù uh, and uh, visit the department for liver transplant. And uh, really, Italy uh, support uh, our program. And of course, there is an exchange of uh, organ when they are not used in, in Greece. Uh, what's the problem in Greece? Uh, to my opinion and to my experience, I think the main problem is intensive care beds. A uh, long time ago, between 2000 and 2004, myself and two other colleagues, 
we were uh, a kind of committee in the Ministry of Health. We performed a questionnaire survey in Greece, and we found out that we need almost a thousand beds, including ICU beds and intermediate care beds. And we had and we still have less than 600 beds, but one quarter of them are always closed due to lack of personnel. We, uh, Greek, I mean, audience, we know every year in the, um, the newspaper the problem with ICU beds. And the result is obviously that critically patients do not find a bed, so they die, or if they survive, they survive with severe sequelae. But also organs are lost since we don't have the, possi the, the luxury to um, uh, check this patient for brain death and to uh, persuade family to give the organs. So we, co we consider and we um, estimate that every year less than also 10% of the all leads are satisfied. Maybe the solution is in the transplantation. It has already been mentioned, but in a Greek paper, in a week, I learned about this story. Um, the heart of uh, pork was transplanted to a baboon, and this animal survived for two and a half years. He died uh, recently. And the overall transplant pro uh, problems in Greece, men I mentioned already the uh, problem of uh, lack of organs. We don't have transplantation centers for children. There are many problems for the follow-up of the patient. We have insurance coverage problems and let's say confusion about the law. We will, I will comment on this. And talking about brain death, which is the only um, uh, situation where we, we are allowed to take organs. Cardiac death is not yet accepted in our law. So we need intensive care in order to make this diagnosis. You know the procedure. It's not a simple examination. It's very precise. But also, and not to say that just saying that it's just death. It is death, but you need to, to follow the procedure. And that's my favorite slide since I presented saying that you see these beautiful flowers, they look like alive, but they are dead because they have been cut from their roots. So this is uh, my example. And also, first, so to, to uh, make the diagnosis, but also to maintain the donor since we have to uh, preserve organs to be viable in order to go to the uh, transplantation. And regarding the laws that have been asked before, there are three different, maybe four situations. Initially, it was what we call organ donation law. That means if you want to be a donor, you declare, you have the, the donor card, and that's it. But in 2011, it was a new law, which uh, took as an example the presumed consent, which is in most European countries. That means that you are considered as an organ donor if you, if you haven't declared the opposite. This, to be honest, it was not very well accepted by the society and also by our Orthodox uh, Church. So in 2012, it has been um, an amendment. It has been clarified that in, in any case, the family should be uh, um, asked and agreed for the uh, organ donation if, of course, the patient is not, has not already declared that he doesn't want to be an organ donor. And to my knowledge, uh, this year there is a discussion about to go back to the initial law, what we call organ donation law. Okay. But, to my opinion, it's more important to continue promotion. And promotion internationally has many, many ways to, to be performed. As you can see here, as a simple method, organ donation as a gift, or as a simple logic, like you can save many lives, or by a symbolism, donate equal life, 
or by a logo or by a wordplay, log in before you log out, or by motivate people to become a hero, becoming a donor, you become a hero, or to people that are thinking about, are conscious, so they can simply think that by giving organs they do something for the society, or by religion that don't take your organs with you, or by solidarity to help each other, or sensitivity, my deepest dream is to live, can you help me? Or by awareness, one of these two will get your organs, you decide. There is no dilemma, of course. Or through feelings, the transplanted people uh, gratitude, express her gratitude to the donor, but the donor is not alive. Or by realism, give to get, since you are six more times likely to need a transplant than be a donor. Or by good publicity, you, you, are, uh, you know this uh, football play, player Abidal, who has been transplanted, he had a liver failure. Or, by bad publicity, this uh, story that has been already mentioned, Dujon, the boy from Australia, and this is the boy who received his heart, he's a journalist. Or, by a success story, this child survived after five organ transplantation. Or, by humor, have you removed all recyclables? Or, by art music, this is the most famous Greek music uh, clarinet player, and he organized a concert for organ donation in 2014. Or even by sensuality, becoming a donor is probably your only chance to get inside me. This is not from a sex shop, this is from an organ donor foundation. So uh, there are many problems about how to follow up these patients. There are many issues about safety, transparency, exploitation, and trafficking. And uh, officially and unofficially, we know that in the whole Europe, uh, more or less, these are guaranteed. And there is the famous Istanbul Declaration in 2008, where 78 countries signed this uh, agreement. And the Hellenic Organization for Transplantation, who every year organizes uh, a very, to celebrate the Donation Day, based on this already mentioned story about the two saints, Cosmas and Damianos, who are recognized by the Greek Orthodox and the Roman Catholic Church, because without any payment, that's anargiri means without payment, have transplanted the leg of a slave, okay, servant maybe, to his master suffering from gangrene. So we organize uh, every year this event with a conference, with a celebration the music hall. And from this picture, I would like to stay on this uh, slide since it's also a personal experience, this boy, was transferred to our unit in 1989, it was December, after he had the trauma, head trauma, and he was in brain death, and uh, the parents gave the organs, so he, he was the first uh, multiple organ donor in Greece as a child, and his mother, after, uh, created an organization in order to promote all kind of uh, donations, I mean blood, cells, tissues and organs. But unfortunately she passed away a few months ago and her uh, husband continues the work. In 2012 we organized uh, um, an event dedicated to children, children as donors or recipients. And you recognize, oh, sorry, Professor Alilizatos in this event. I'm still working on this issue. I'll, I'm a little older, of course, in the picture, but I'm still working for this purpose. 
very fanatically, and I have been participating in many, many events about organ donation. And from this uh, TV um, picture, I'll show you this young lady, Professor Rivizautos knows her very well. She gave birth to a child after he had been transplanted. And this boy, Petros, wrote a book, The Story of My Heart, and through this book, he's also promoting organ donation, and we also participate in these events. Uh, generally speaking, the, the National Health Organization is, of course, the leading uh, organization, but to answer to the question, economic uh, issue is the major problem. I can tell you that in 2012 and 2013, we have been financed by the Ministry of Health with 100,000 euros, while other organizations for against narcotics or infections or uh, uh, blood products, I mean to, to uh, import blood products, received uh, millions of uh, euros. Uh, at that time, I had a very, let's say, uh, a kind of explosion. I was invited to a Congress, and I didn't go, saying that I don't have time to go to a Congress. I have to go to the ministry asking for money. But uh, promotion still be very important. And we st and, uh, but regarding the work of this organization, coordination is also very, very crucial. But unfortunately, at that time, even when I was president, even now, they have few, few persons in this organization. So this work is done with, uh, very, uh, with difficulties. Also, uh, there are associations of transplanted people who show uh, different activities, solidarity between them, protest for their rights, uh, entertainment, information and activities. And I would also please allow me to say a few words about the, the Greek church, since this is the archbishop who was my teacher at school. This is a reunion with him. And this is the bishop of Mesogeas and Lavreotikis, the rural area of uh, surrounding Athens, who is representing the Holy Synod in Eom, the national organization. And the Greek Orthodox Church had the decision since 1998 to support organ donation and transplantation, of course, in a religious way, saying that church want to help the recipient, but also to respect the donor. We agree, of course. And in conclusion, we all agree, I presume, that uh, uh, solid organ transplantation is safe and effective, but there is still a problem of lack of uh, ICU beds. That's the reason uh, we don't have enough uh, organs, but also for some reservation among, uh, in the society. And I think I can go to, to conclude with some proposals that Obviously, to increase the number of organs, we need more uh, ICU beds. We have to support the national organization, maybe to extend indications by the cardiac death uh, procedure, the new law, I don't care really. And also, why not to include private hospitals in, uh, in this uh, procedure, in something that it's a little bit, let's say, um, I can't find a word, but you understand it's, it's in our society that many think that we don't understand. And finally, to send a message that somewhere in the world there is a life which can be helped only by me. Love, social, welfare. Thank you very much for your attention.